Good afternoon. It is four o'clock. We're going to go ahead and enter into our afternoon period of worship here shortly. We have a few announcements to uh, to work through first. Uh, it's good to see everybody back with us this afternoon. Uh, numbers are a bit down, but we still have a good number here. Um, as I mentioned this morning, uh, Christina Johnson, uh, sick, still away from us this afternoon. I assume she's not feeling any better. Um, <clears throat> do, uh, we do have several out of town, as we uh, mentioned earlier today. Uh, both uh, Zach Johnson and Mike are still down in Tennessee. Tina and Kelsey in uh, Bloomington. Uh, Nevin's still out and traveling this afternoon. Um, one other thing to make mention of, uh, Tim is with us right now, um, recently back from a trip to the Netherlands. He's leaving on Tuesday uh, for a second go-around. He'll be away from us for the duration of the month. Um, so we will uh, keep him in our thoughts during that time. Uh, as I mentioned this morning, Mike Johnson has the Wednesday invitation. As far as the order of services this afternoon, uh, Warren has a song service. You'll see 69 has been marked as his first selection. Go ahead and turn that to that if you're not there already. Uh, Matt will uh, handle the Lord's table if there's anybody who needs to partake of it. Um, Chuck will be delivering the lesson of the hour. Uh, Chris Barron will be wording our closing prayer at the appropriate time. Uh, as we mentioned this morning, the meeting is coming up. It will be October 9th through the 14th with Jeff Smith. Um, there are flyers uh, on the uh, back table. We ran some more off after the uh, <clears throat> after uh, the transition between uh, class and services today. So if you didn't see any there, we should have some more available for you. Um, one other thing that was brought up at the uh, close of service this morning, uh, the monthly class coming up this week, uh, the Splutorfs will be hosting it. So seven o'clock this Friday at their house for the monthly class. Uh, if there's anything else I failed to mention, we can bring it up at the end of service. Otherwise, I will turn things over to Warren. <laughs> Sing the first, second, and third verses. All three verses. Somewhere the sun is shining. Somewhere the sun burns well. I still like that reminding me. God has a day of all this well. So Thank you. 
Shall we pray? Dear God, our Father in heaven, we're thankful for this time that we have to come here on this Lord's Day, this second time now today that we can come here and in the quiet of this place, Father, and to, to bow our heads in prayer to you and know that you will listen to us, Father, as your children. For the opportunities we have to sing songs of praise to you, Father, we pray that we'll never take them for granted, that we'll always take this opportunity to understand the words that we sing to you, Father. We just sang about heaven and knowing what's been prepared for us and we know that the, our life here on earth father is but a vapor just it's, it's temporary we have so much work to do while we're here father and we know there's a lost and dying world out there and we pray that we can be the light that they see and that we might be the example to them and to each other father of what we should be as christians that we follow in the path that jesus paid for us while he was here on this earth as he was the perfect sacrifice for us and we thank you for him giving his life and sacrificing himself on the cross father and his blood that covers our sins we thank you so much for the congregation that meets your father we pray that you help, help us to always stay strong and never waver in standing for the truth we pray that you help us to edify each other in our in our service to you for those of our number who are away we pray for them father whether it be sickness or travel that they might be returned when uh, when they can father that they can be back here with us again we pray father for those that are hurting at this time for uh, loss of a loved one and we know as we mentioned life is temporary on this earth so we need to be about uh, god's work father and we need to to lead others to you in, in whatever manner we can and and we pray for uh, the, the people that might, they might reach out to you father and find you in this difficult time father we pray for for us individually father we know we go out into the world each day we're confronted by by temptations and help us never to give in to those father but we know sometimes we do and if we do fall short father we pray that we'll quickly repent of those those sins make them right in your sight uh, pray for forgiveness and and turn around and do a, a 180 and just put those aside and say i don't want to be like that anymore father help me and give us give us strength father when we ask you for our forgiveness and, and we pray that you'll help us each day to improve our walk towards you as we want to walk towards heaven each day, Father, and we pray that you'll help us to never lose sight of that. Father, we pray as we hear your word proclaimed tonight, the message that Chuck has prepared for us, that we might be attentive to it. Take what is, is found in your scriptures and make application to our lives as only we can. We look in a mirror, we look at ourselves, we don't look at, at other people and help us make those corrections as we need to, Father. We ask that you look down upon us with mercy this time, Father. Be with us here in this service. Forgive us, Father, if we have failed you in any way, and we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is there anyone here to see you take the Lord's Supper? If not, let's turn to page 72. 72. Thank you. 
over us. Beyond the sunset, hopeless the morning, when with our Savior and his begun, earth's holy hand Well, leaving here this morning, I was counting in my head, and I said, wow, man, we had 21 visitors this morning. I think she's going to be a little smaller tonight. But not much smaller. It's good to see everyone out tonight. we got a few still away of our own, but we're uh, in uh, an interesting study tonight because, as I mentioned last week, I'm going to be dealing in the evenings for a couple of weeks anyways, dealing about this subject of leadership, leadership qualities. And... Um, Tonight, we're going to be talking um, about a couple that we read about in the Scripture. And so when we talk about this couple this evening, there's some things I just want you to be aware of before we get into looking at a number of passages and look at, well, I'll give you a heads up. We're going to be looking at four, four points tonight as we consider this example of this couple. That if you're not a couple... Uh, I'm not a couple, so I'm just, I'm a single, so the lesson doesn't apply to me. No, no, that's not true. Um, because we're talking about leadership qualities. And if you are a couple, I don't want you to be thinking, I got to do exactly what they do? You're missing the point. Because there's things that they do that we don't necessarily do exactly. But again, keep in mind as we go through this, we're just talking about the qualities of leadership, of people who are jumping in there and doing things that need to get done. And we're just going to learn a lot from this godly couple um, as they labored with Paul, and Paul gave them some responsibilities. And so that's what we're going to be doing this evening. So, first of all, we're going to open up our Bibles to the book of Acts. We're going to go to the 18th chapter, Acts 18. And if you haven't already figured it out, we're going to be talking about Aquila and Priscilla. We can read about them, well, really, we've got this chapter, we've got Romans 16, and we've got 1 Corinthians 16, and that's it. And there's just a couple of verses in each one of those chapters that we're going to look at. But I believe there's more than enough in there for us to, to learn from tonight and aspire to, to be like in, in a number of different ways. And that's why the scriptures are given for us, because we're to set a good example, and hopefully they set a good example as a godly couple. Now, the first thing that I want us to notice here is that uh, 
In Acts chapter 18 and verse 1, it says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And I want us to think about that for a little bit. Because this is before he actually met Aquila and Priscilla. Okay? And to get us an idea of what Paul is encountering here and what is his state, I'm just going to, I'm going to stay here, but I'm going to quickly turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 for a moment. Now, if you've been reading, if you've read uh, the book of Acts and up to the 18th chapter, you'll notice how Paul's been traveling around and he's been fired up. He's going from city to city, he goes into the synagogues, and he's preaching the gospel, you know, and he's just, you know, he's going in there. He's unafraid of them. He's just going to go preach the gospel. Sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't. He goes on to another city. Well, when he comes into Corinth, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 13, when he wrote this letter, he told them how he felt when he first came there, which means when we're in Acts 18 and verse 1, this was his present state. What I'm setting up for you guys, is, is, is it a coincidence that he runs into Aquila and Priscilla? It's like just what the doctor ordered for him. Because here's, here's the situation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he said in verse 3, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. Paul, is that really you? Is that the guy I read over here in, in Acts chapter 18 that we've just been reading in, in these previous chapters of you on these missionary journeys, and you're back out on this second journey, and you're going into synagogues, and you're going into the cities? Do you really feel like that? Well, I think there's something in this passage that kind of says, well, yeah, because he comes into this city. What does he have? I get the impression he didn't have much. It says in verse 2, and I'm in Acts, 17, uh, Acts 18, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for by occupation... They were tent makers. So Paul gets to stay with them, you know, and, and, here, and, and, and immediately he, he goes to work. The first point I'm trying to get us to learn from this couple is that they were an encouragement to Paul and other people. That's what godly couples do. They, they're just actually interested in others. They're brothers and sisters and those who labor for the Lord interested in the, the cause of Christ, which I'm going to talk about in my second point when I get there in just a few minutes. It said in verse 3 that he stayed with them. They showed hospitality. And of course, we know that because, you know, firsthand, Paul was, was talking about this in Romans chapter 12. He's experienced it. You know, when he says in Romans chapter 12, and in verse 10, be kindly affection to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. And then he mentioned in verse 13, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. You know, I, I can just see Paul in Romans telling the brethren there, this is what's expected. He's writing by inspiration, but Paul has also experienced that. Have you? I know you have. You've experienced the kindness of others. as You've been traveling. You know, just sit down. You know, Tim's been to the Netherlands, and the, there's brethren over there that opened up their home. And a lot of you... A lot of us have experienced this firsthand as you've gone around. And you, you can appreciate this couple that, that's willing to, to, to help out here. Um, as a matter of fact, that, that passage over in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, that's one of those few passages that mention this couple. But over in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, it says in verse 19, The churches of Asia greet, greet, greet you, Aquila and Priscilla greet you heartily, in the Lord. And so we, we get the idea that, you know, th this couple cares. They, they, they give warm greeting. Paul gives warm greetings from this couple to other brethren. You know, it's, you know, when, like we say, Tim, you know, Tim, send our salutations to the brethren in uh, the Netherlands when you go. You know, it's it just, oh, that was, that's nice. These are not, these are not empty words. It's just my point is we need couples like this within the church. Such people like this, they, they make a difference. And, and that's something to aspire, and you can appreciate uh, of this couple, that they were truly an encouragement to other people. We talked about that in our Bible class this morning. 
And I don't know about you, but when you read Acts chapter 18, that first part, you really get the impression here that that's just what Paul needed, and he appreciated them. Now, as things unfold in Acts chapter 18, let's move down a little bit. Um, in verse 18, Acts 18 and verse 18. So it says, So Paul still remained a good while. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed to Syria. And Priscilla and Aquila were with him, for he had his hair cut off at Centuria, for he had taken a vow. And he came to Ephesus, and he left them there, but he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Now, the point that we're going to be spending time talking about is that Paul leaves them in Ephesus. Why would he leave them there? Why would Paul leave this couple there? I mean, he traveled with them, and now Paul's going to go on, he's going to leave them there in Ephesus. Well, he's going to labor. You know, he wants them to labor with the brethren there. And that's why in Romans chapter 16, when you put all these little pieces of puzzle together, you get a good idea of what these, uh, these Christians were really like that were helping Paul. Over in Romans chapter 16, and he mentions in verse 3, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. You know, you want to be recognized as a fellow worker. You know, that, that's what we need to aspire to be. And that, that's what leaders do. They have those leadership qualities. You don't have to be up front here doing a public duty to possess leadership qualities. Um, the, this was a couple, and, and he addressed the couples as being fellow workers. Let's understand that. And our sisters in the Lord need to understand that concept, that we work together. Certain things that you can't do publicly, fine. But you know what? There's certain things that men can't do publicly. Do you know that? There's certain things. You know, that, you know, as far as public duties, that's really what I meant. Um, or even public duties, and they're not able to do that. I mean, we have some people who do some great things, but some might say, you know what, Chuck, I've tried. I can't lead songs. I don't want to lead songs. Okay, fine. You try. That's great. And then you think about some men here that aren't married. They can't be an elder. Oh, no, that doesn't mean, does that mean they, they can't show leadership qualities? Of course they can show leadership qualities and do things to help the local church and, and be like Aquila and Priscilla and be a worker for the Lord. You don't necessarily have to be an elder or a deacon or a preacher to be a worker for the Lord. That's what I want us to notice. But this couple, what's impressive about them is they had a love for the truth because he leaves them in Ephesus. Now, when you read in Acts 18, I know a lot of us, we would read the last few verses. We're going to eventually get there because that's a lesson that's preached a lot about this couple. But I want us to notice that it said in verse 26. Well, let's just back up a little bit here because, uh, well, no, you know, I'm going to be reading this whole section anyway. So let me start in verse 24. I was going to read this for a later points. But we might just well read it now because I want to get something from verse 26. Let's notice. Verse 24. Now, a certain Jew named Apollos, born of Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Who's in Ephesus? We know. Aquila and Priscilla are there. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And he being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. Now, look at verse 26. Have you thought about this? So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, and when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God more accurately. Now, we're going to talk more about that in a bit, but here's my question for you. What's Aquila and Priscilla doing in the synagogue? What are they doing there? Well, we know what Apollos is doing there. Apollos went there. Of course, he's thinking he's teaching the truth. He's not. And uh, it's mighty in the scriptures. And we know that the couple takes them aside. But just aside from that, what are they doing there? You know, you, you need to understand this point. It's powerful because as a couple, we're noticing they're interested in the cause of Christ. They're interested in the truth. They're interested in the gospel getting out. They're interested in souls being saved. Listen, when you get into a discussion with people and they say, you know, we should worship on the Sabbath. You say, well, why do you say that? Well, Paul went on the Sabbath, he went into the synagogue, and he taught. 
Yes, he did. He didn't go there to worship. That, that wasn't his purpose. You know, he would worship with his brethren on the first day of the week, but he would go into the synagogue because there was opportunities to teach. Man, I would go into any religious group today. If they had opportunities for anybody to stand up and teach, I'm going. Okay. If they'll let me. Okay. Now, they might let me once, like Paul. They let you a little while, and then they go, I don't like what he's teaching, and out he goes. Okay, I get that. And so they took advantage of those opportunities. Aquila and Priscilla, what are they doing there? Same thing Paul would be doing. You know, just looking for opportunities. Like Apollos is looking for opportunities. And here's this couple. What I like about it is they go to this synagogue, and, you know, I don't know whether their attitude is, hey, Apollos is going to be there. Let's go support him. Kind of like you guys. Hey, Chuck's preaching at this religious group down the street. Hey, one, a couple. Hey, let's just go. You know? Tony and, Tony and Tracy, hey, let's just go in here. Let's just go in here and support that. Well, if I get up there and start teaching, and I'm in a place that they need to hear the gospel, and I start teaching something wrong, what's Tony and Trey doing taking me aside? You need to take these people aside. Well, no, this couple, they're interested in the truth. And so when they go there, they're, they're listening. They're not just going there. You, you know, you know, I've got long term. I've got a long term plan here with these people that meet in this synagogue. We're going to become friends. You know, our kids are going to grow up together. And we're going to go and we're going to go camping together. I've got a 20 year plan of converting them. We're going to become best buds. You know, what people need they need the gospel. That's what they need. And so this couple goes there, and they're listening, and guess what? Uh, they realize he's not teaching the right thing. So what's it going to take for you to not know that somebody's teaching the truth? Uh, you're going to have to know what the truth is. So that's what you have to appreciate about this couple. Okay, again, I want. what can I learn about them? You know, what? What can Deb and I learn from this couple? What can we learn on an individual basis of these Christians? Well, they're encouragement to Paul and his work, and they want to be a fellow laborer. But these people were truly interested in the truth. They were students of the word is the point. See, because if you'll notice, you'll notice in our reading, it said in verse 26, when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside, I get this, and they explained to him the way of God more accurately. So you're accurate. You know, if you're going to take somebody's side, you better know what you're talking about. You, you need to be aware of that. And so that's what they want. And, and they wanted this person to know the truth. They, they, they went with the attitude of trying to help him understand that, you know, the baptism of John, we're not under that anymore. We're under the, we're under the baptism of Christ. And of course, if you read the 19th chapter, which is really not our study, and I'm not going to get into that tonight. But there were individuals there who had just been baptized under John's baptism. Doesn't do any good. If you don't understand what you're doing, you're just getting wet. People need to be converted. And that's what they were wanting out of Paul. Is if you're going to go and teach people, if you're going to go into the synagogue, you better tell the truth. You better be right in what you're talking about. You better to study to show yourself approved. And that's what this couple did. Now, how did they get to that point? I want you to understand this. Couples make time. When we're told, it's in the bulletin, remember I tell you, every week it's at the top. You know, when we study to show ourselves approved, how's your Bible study habits? As a couple, as an individual, are you students of it? Because people are students of it. They do all that they can to try to help other people learn. And there's a goal for it. It's to help themselves to be able to help others. So let's go to Romans chapter 16. Have to move on. Romans chapter 16. Now they're interested in the truth. They want to be an encouragement to other people. But what can you say about their faith? Well, I read in verse, uh, verse, which one? We're going to read verse four. But I'll read verse three again. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. This couple was willing to risk their own lives. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment. You know, yes, I love Paul, 
and I love what he's doing, but you know, I really don't want to get involved. <laughs> I got other things to do that, you know, honey, let's not do this. No, no, they were in it together. What a contrast, right guys? What a contrast to the couple in Acts chapter five. Those in our monthly class, you know, we've been going through our, the book of Acts. And so this, this Friday night, we're continuing in our book of Acts. We had a good discussion when we went through the, through the uh, fifth chapter and talked about Ananias and Sapphira. You talk about the opposite. You talk about the opposite. We, we, maybe I should have read them first of all. Well, here's how you're not to act, and here's how you are to act. That couple in agreements to lie, uh, to pretend to be righteous, you know, you're, you're not sacrificing much, you know, because you, what, you, you didn't want to give it all. Well, Peter said, well, you didn't have to give it all. I'm reading there from Acts chapter 5, or I'm quoting from Acts chapter 5. That's the way this couple were. Now, over here with Aquila and Priscilla, you know what? When it says they were willing to risk their, their necks, what's Paul saying? They're willing to, to pay the price. For what? For the cause of Christ. You know, sacrificing time and effort. That's what I'm understanding within this. And that's what, what, what Paul is saying here. You know, and he wanted the brethren to be aware of them. It, it wasn't to brag on them. I don't know about you, but if there's any couple here and somebody got up here and started bragging on you, would say, don't do that. I get that. It's, it's embarrassing. Quit. You don't want anybody bragging on you. I get that. Paul wasn't putting them up to it. But these are part of the inspired words. And the news about Aquila and Priscilla ought to provoke you and I to say, you know what? I want to I want to possess these leadership qualities. I want to jump in. I want to do. I want to help. And if it causes sacrifice, time and effort, money, whatever it might be, I want to help the cause of Christ. And you want to know something. I'm not going to embarrass anybody here. And I've sh I've told a few people. I'm not sure how many. But when we did this building, you know, when, you know, we put the word out. You know, we just, we need to finance. We didn't have any money. We're going to buy this building. And the word gets out. And I get a phone call from an older couple, members of the church, an older couple. They've been retired for a long time. And this, old, the, this older person calls me up and said, Brother Barley, are you guys still in need of, of financial help? You know, on an individual basis. And so that we'll pay them back. And that was early on when I was getting a little nervous. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says, well, I'll call you back in a few minutes. Hangs up the phone, talks with his wife, calls me back and says, well, and I won't give you the amount, but it was quite a bit, but it was down like, let me give you an example. It was like, uh, let's say I said, we can give you $15,500. I mean, they had it, they, they worked it all out. And it just, it just melted my heart is what it did. You know, I said, I wish I could come through the phone and just hug you. But these people, I've never, I have not met. I don't remember meeting them. I may have once or twice, but I just, I've been down in that area. They just want help. And that's, and you say, well, why are they doing that? They, didn't, they weren't risking their necks. <laughs> but if they're on a fixed income, that was, you know, they're, they're, they were, that was quite a sacrifice for them. But they worked it out so that they could do that. But they're one of, of many and people here. But the point is, we need to talk about this idea of sacrifice, which Paul wanted them to see. And we, I say, you know, as couples, it's easy to get comfortable today when there's so much that needs to be done in the areas for the cause of Christ. What can I do? And tell yourselves, what can I do? And that's what we want to do. And I've known couples that would do this. Start a new work. Hey, we'll move. You ever hear of that? You know, a preacher, you know, let, let, let's go start a new work over here. And a couple says, hey, we'll just move. I'll find work over there. Who would do that? Who would just quit their job in a certain part of the country and then go over here and help with a local, try to start a local congregation? Because it helps to have a nucleus. By the way, that's all part of it because that's what we're going to be reading here in just a moment, the very next, the very next verse is a powerful point that I'm going to get to right now. Look what he says in verse five. Likewise, 
Greet the church that is in their house. Did you catch that? What I appreciate about Aquila and Priscilla here is that they cared greatly for the local church. The church was that, 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 that was their family. Now, what does it mean for the church to be in their home? Um, I don't know. I don't know what their home looks like. But all I know is that for the church to meet in their home, Dan and I talked about on the radio program today over in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. He told the Corinthian brethren, when you come together as a church, you've got to come together. They opened up their home. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about, how hard it is to get ready for company. Anybody know how hard it is to get ready for company? Anybody here, when they're having company over, some of us men talked to the other men and I said, I guess you had a pretty easy week. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, there's just so much preparation that goes in to just having company. The church met in their home. That's not once. The church doesn't come together once and that's it. The church comes together regularly. They come to regularly on the first day of the week. They come together and they worship God and they opened up their home. You don't think there's a sacrifice for that? You know, Priscilla, oh, honey, somebody else do it. Can't somebody else do it? Why do, why do we have to do that? Or he might say it. He might come along and say, you know, do we have to do this? I mean, come on. I mean, it just disrupts everything. You know, I had plans this afternoon. Say what, Chuck, back in those days, they didn't have plans. Come on, guys. Let's understand. This was a sacrifice for them and for them to have the church in their home. And now, now it gets me back to this idea with Paul. Uh, I'm going to go uh, to that Corinthian passage again because they all relate. There's not a lot of them, but that 1 Corinthians chapter 16, he mentioned it in verse 19. The churches of Asia greet you. Aquila and Priscilla greet you heartily in the Lord with the churches in their house. And he mentions it again, with the church that is in their home. It's in their house. You know, that's how the church here started, right? You guys were meeting at Warren and Tina's place. They opened up their home. Now, we know there's limitations to that. Size-wise, tried to do it today. <laughs> Try to get everybody in their living room today. That would be quite a challenge, okay? So we, we have this facility. I get that. But I'm talking about an attitude here of, of involvement and the work of the church that is there for the edification. We were talking about that in our Ephesians class, and this, this is what I love about it. Um, when we were talking about in Ephesians, the, the fourth chapter this morning, and how churches have that care one for another, I want to pursue that for a little bit. I was talking to somebody recently, talked about the responsibilities within the local church and, and working together. That's that's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to go over there in a moment, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I was talking to an individual recently, a member of the church. I say recently, probably been months. Time flies. And he was going somewhere. I said, oh, you're going to spend a couple of days there? I think he was going to visit family. No, 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 no. I, I got to get back. I'm on singing tomorrow or on Sunday. Yeah. Who cares? You know, why didn't you say, oh, they'll just get somebody. Don't worry, but just go. Just go. Now, don't take that to the nth degree because, hey, Chuck, are you trying to tell me that I can't go away when I'm on for something? And you're missing the point. Because I'm going away when I'm on for stuff. Okay. I'm talking about not having the attitude of, well, let they'll get somebody whoa 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 there you know within the church that we read about in first corinthians chapter 12 it's us and we your brother have been good about this your brother been good about you know hey make make sure I, i'm going out of town can you find somebody to fill in for me that's great you know that that's different than just you know nothing being said you're gone who cares they'll take care of it wait a minute it isn't them and me it's us and we didn't mean it for it to rhyme, but it works. It's 
There it is. We're, we're a part of this. And that's what he mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which I love about the body of Christ. And I'm talking about Aquila and Priscilla having the attitude. You know, we're going to have the church at our house. Honey, we, we need to go visit uh, Uncle Harry. Well, no, we really can't do that because, you know, we've got the church coming over. I mean, that happened up north a lot. Churches are small. Churches were small. And this one couple I knew, they were, they were rarely ever, ever, ever away on a Sunday. They would travel, they would travel Monday through Saturday, whenever they had to go visit somebody, but they'd always be back on Sunday. Why? And you ask them, well, why'd you do that? Well, we, we had very few people to do things, and you know, I, I needed to be there. Well, who does that though? It's a person who says, you know what? That's my church family. The church met in their home. That was their brothers and sisters. That's the attitude I'm trying to get us, get us to learn from this couple. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, this is what they're getting, okay? In verse 12 of chapter 12, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one, so also is Christ. Verse 14, For in fact, the, bo the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not of the hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? You see, here's, my, here's, here's the point that should give you some comfort here, so I'm not lecturing or trying to make you feel low or feel bad do you realize in uh romans chapter 16 and verse 5 not all the people that attended there could do this if it was a you know if every church family there said well i want the church to meet in our place well you don't have to i mean you well, we'll just meet here. Okay, I'm good with that. I mean, it's, it's this idea. I'm glad to go there. I don't have to feel bad that we're not having it in my place. Bad. If a, if a couple does something and, and you don't do that, but you can do other things. And that's the point that he's talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that we're going to be reading on in here. Well, you know, not everybody's an ear. Not everybody opens their home or is even able to do that. Okay, we, we understand that. But we are talking about having this idea of everybody being important. That's why he said, verse 15, If the foot should say, because I am not of, a hand, of the hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the ear should say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were a hearing, where would be the smelling? You think about this. Warren got up and led songs tonight. What good's a song later if there's nobody there to read? I mean, that, you think about it. You get up there and preach, Jeff. What's good preaching? There's nobody out there to preach to. You see, you, know, you want to put the emphasis on what? The listener, the preacher? We're all, it, 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 everybody's doing their part tonight. But what we're learning from this couple is this idea is that they actually had this genuine love for the church as we do. We have that love. We have that care. We have that concern. Couples can do that. They get involved. They participate relating to those other points I was talking about. He now says in verse 18, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would be the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much more rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But if our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which it lacks, there should be no schisms in the body. Now, what, what I'm learning about this, here's what I'm learning, is if I'm tending there, if Debbie and I are tending there, I'm not to be jealous of Aquila and Priscilla. And if I'm attending there, Aquila and Priscilla are not looking down on me. <laughs> you and Debbie aren't opening your heart. No. The point that we're talking about here, good leaders, having those leadership qualities that we've been talking about tonight, being interested in others, having a strong love for the truth, and listening carefully. And that's why members of the body of Christ, we've got a gospel meeting coming up. If this couple were in a synagogue, listening to the message being preached and wanting to make sure that people are hearing the gospel, do you think for one moment 
if they had them back then? Do you think that if they had a gospel meeting, that that couple would be present? Think about it. Hey, it's at our place tonight. We got plans. You know, I mean, you, you learn from this couple. I mean, this is a couple that says, you know what? It's all about our Lord. And, you know, we're risking our necks. We're willing to do that. It, it's not to brag on ourselves. We just want to see the gospel go. And you see that wherever you go. And that's what should stand out in our lives when people see us. Um, oh, yes. And I also wanted to bring up this idea is I don't want to take what I learned from them the church for granted. I don't want to take it for granted. Hebrews chapter 10. I, I, I want to bring this up. Because again, it's not to make anybody uh, be, be uh, self-righteous. I'm trying to get us to think about this couple. You know, in Hebrews chapter 10, when he tells in verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises is faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. You brethren are here tonight. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? You were here this morning. Well, uh, you're here. No, but why are you here? That's what I'm asking. Because if you're going to say, well, Chuck, do I have to be here? Wrong question. I'm asking you, why are you here? Chances are your, question, your answer is, uh, I've come to worship God. I want to hear the truth. I want to speak. I want to sing. I want to pray. I want, I want to study. I want to learn. That, 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 that's why I'm here. That, that's the whole idea. And, and that's why it isn't this concept here that we have a double standard. And see, a double standard for me, and you've heard me preach about this before when I've talked about this, I don't want to be guilty of a double standard. There are times when, when, when we might not be able to take advantage of those opportunities to study, but we provide them as a church for us to grow. And so when a person talks about, you know, this idea of do I have to, I say, look, you do whatever you want. But here's what I have to warn myself about. Here it is. And for some of you, most of you probably have heard this before. If I'm not the preacher, okay, I'm not the preacher. Try to imagine that. I'm not the preacher. I'm just, I'm sitting with Debbie. We're members here, okay? And then I say, well, do I have to come Wednesday? Do I have to come for Bible study on Sunday morning? Do I have to come Wednesday? That's my attitude. And if Debbie were to say to me, she would say, well, if she said, well, look at it. You don't have to go. I mean, you were there for Sunday morning worship. You don't have to go. But she could say to me, she could say, are you ever going to go on a Wednesday or Sunday something? And I, if I say to her, well, yeah. Yeah, I'm, there'll be times when something else is not going on. I'm going to go to Bible study. And here's my question. When you come to Bible study, she could say, when you go to Bible study, since nothing's on your plate, Chuck, since nothing's on your agenda that was important, since you have that free time, if you go there on Wednesday, are you going to expect the brethren to be there? Would you be upset if nobody else showed up? Well, yeah, I didn't get in my car to drive all the way here. Nobody show up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up the phone and say, where were you guys? Why would you do that? Why, why would you call somebody up and say, where were you guys? If I'm not going to call you up and say, where were you? And see, all I'm trying to get us to see is, let's just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Let's just be careful. We understand that we are a church here, and we work together, and we provide these opportunities for us to grow. Okay? Now, you, now when a person talks about, well, okay, Chuck, if I don't want to go, okay. And when you come, that's great. But if, if I'm going to be playing these games, i got to be careful because what I learned from this couple is, again, 
I'm learning to edify my brothers. I have a love for the truth. I have, what was that other one that I had? You guys following along with me? Oh, yeah. Love for the truth, the cause of Christ. The sacrifices are involved in there. And a deep care for the local church. And I see that here. It's, it, it's great. Man, I'll tell you, it's nice. It's nice. I've been in small congregations before where it's been like Aquila and Priscilla, like Debbie and I and one other person. We've been in small congregations before. But it's kind of cool. I'll come here. You guys have already jumped in. You guys have already jumped in. You, you're possessing those leadership qualities. You're jumping in and you're already doing stuff. You're, you're, you're just saying, well, so-and-so wasn't here and somebody's already volunteered. I remember, I, I think it was either Matt or Dan. Somebody's done this to me in the past where I walked in and I'm running around like my head cut off again like I usually do. And I'm coming in here going, who's doing that? And they're like going, Chuck, settle down. You already got somebody to fill that. It's great. I love that. It's that leadership quality. And people jumping in to do things. That's what I learn about Aquila and Priscilla. And the question I have for you is that are we like them? Do we have that, that, that spiritual hunger and, and love for the word and interested in this church right here, this River Ridge Church of Christ? This is our family. This is the work that we're doing here, and we're going to do everything to help build it up and strengthen it and reach the gospel. Appreciate the prayers. We pray for the work here. We pray for the efforts that are being put forth. The people that are volunteering to go on the radio program, that's kind of cool, man. But you know what? I realize everybody doesn't do the same thing. Why didn't everybody volunteer to do the directory? Why didn't, why doesn't everybody do the, uh, the video? Why, you know, I mean, there's different talents. We have people here with different talents. And Aquila and Priscilla had talent. Paul picked up on that. He took them on his trip. He left them in Ephesus. He went on. They went into the synagogue. They took him aside. Brethren were greeting them. Brethren were thankful for them. They touched the lives of other people. And I want you to know something. Your lives are touching the lives of other people. When people come here, they see you. They see your interest. They see your dedication. They see your love. That touches them. That means a lot. For this church, you guys, you say it in your prayers all the time. This church needs to be a shining light in the community. Somebody prayed that this morning. Sorry, I don't remember who. But somebody said, we want to be a shining light in this community. And to do that, we need a congregation full of leaders. Leaders. People that are jumping and do stuff. Have that leadership quality is what I'm talking about here. So well, can even a woman do that? Yeah, there's people that just do stuff. They jump in and they volunteer. This was a general lesson about leadership. Now, I told you guys last, last Sunday night, and we're going to do it, Lord willing, when I get back. The Sunday night I get back, so that's in three weeks. We're going to talk about the leadership qualities that we are to possess in the home. Husbands. Wives. And as parents. But we're going to be talking about that leadership that we read in the scriptures about how they dealt with things and what God expected out of them and how that you and I can possess that and need to in order to be effective for the Lord and be faithful to our Lord. So just a, not a lot of verses tonight because there isn't a lot of verses about Aquila and Priscilla, but I'm going to tell you, there was enough there that told me that this couple, they had courage, they leaned on each other. I don't know if, if I, you can be opening up your psalm books right now, but I don't know about you, but I could just picture Aquila and Priscilla when Apollos started preaching. I could just see them look at each other. Did he just say what I thought he said? I've done that. Debbie and I have been in places. Did he say what I thought he said? I want to challenge us. I want to challenge you. I'm challenging myself. Chuck, step it up. You can always do more. Remember that. We can do more. For what? For the family of God. That's the key here. Not to be self-righteous. Not to be better than anybody else. But to do our part. I didn't talk about becoming a Christian tonight, but I did talk about the duties of the Christian within the local church. But if you're not a Christian, I want to encourage you to become one because there's no greater joy than to be a child of God. And what I talked about tonight is you become a part of the local church. I'm in a meeting. I'm going to be doing a whole series on the church. Well, you talk about a guy that's fired up for it, talking about the church. 
It's wonderful. You and I are to be members of that. We're members of it. Let's value that. But if you're not a Christian, you're missing out on that. And if you're a child of God that's gone wayward, you need to be restored. You need to come back. Get fired up and we help each other. Let's help each other get stronger is my point. Let's take advantage of the tools that are there. Because people are looking at your example. I didn't mention that a lot tonight. Should have. You young couples, other couples are looking at you. Single people, people are looking at you too. You younger kids have younger kids looking up to you. Everybody's looking at each other. So let's be mindful of that. So tonight, if you're subject to the invitation anyway, be mindful of that as we stand and sing a song. It was <clears throat> Jesus is tenderly calling the home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love will the grow farther and farther away? Calling today, calling today. Calling the weary to rest, calling today, calling today. Bring him thy burden, and thou shalt be blessed. He will not turn thee away. Calling today. Waiting, oh, come to him now. Waiting today, waiting today. Come with thy sins at his feet, holy bow. Come and no longer delay. Calling today, calling today. comments he made towards the end of his uh, lesson tonight and uh, the little kids when they're like so and they're running around and you see them and when you're a young person there's somebody looking at you there's somebody looking at you close and you can be a big help to somebody else and it's an interesting time it's a, it's a wonderful time for this group when i see the kids running around they're going crazy it's, it's enjoyable uh, there's nothing else we ever Closing part. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful Sunday to come together and worship you and sing praises unto thee. And Dear Heavenly Father, please be with us that we may leave this place and look to you as we go throughout our daily lives this week, and it may we may look to you for guidance and strength and Everything that we do may do to become better Christians each and every day. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with people that are sick, they may return to the full portion of health, and please be with people on the road to travel and may return their home safely. Please be with us as we go throughout our week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm <laughs> <laughs>